When using the IDEA Studio to build the operator interface, what you'll do most often is represent tag values and build the operator interface controls. And that means widgets. So widgets are fundamental to everything you're going to do in the IDEA Studio. So I'm going to take this entire video just to describe for you all the features and all the properties of widgets so you know everything there is to know about what you can do with these tools. Let's start by opening the IDEA Studio, and we're going to continue on from what we had in the first video in the series of two widgets on the screen. Now, before we go too far, I want to emphasize the difference between a widget and an image, because they can look like the same thing. So for example, if I start at the beginning of my widgets palette, and I open up the equipment folder, and within that I find there are pumps. I can grab one of these pump widgets, bring it to the screen, drop it here, and that can now be linked to a digital status or digital input tag to monitor a pump's current running state. If I were to go to the images palette, I'd find that within the folders for, uh, that are available to me, there is one for pumps, and within that, I have an image that looks exactly the same as the widget that I just drew. Well, there's no coincidence there. The widget uses this image in order to represent a pump value. But the widget has the programming tools within it to be animated and to link to a tag value. The image is just an image, and there is no way that you can link that image to a tag. If I open up its properties, there is no link option here, as there is within a widget. Now, sometimes in a course, I'll find somebody who will draw everything using images, and they will ask, OK, is there any quick way that I can turn my images into widgets? And the answer is no. I mean, there's simply nothing there. It's kind of like walking into a wax museum and saying, well, these things look just like people. Is there any way to make them um, walk and talk? Again, uh, just there is nothing there to make the representation have all the features that are available inside of the widget. Okay, so being clear on that, let's go back to our widgets palette and we will work here in order to build the user interface and represent tag values. Now, the first challenge you're going to find is how do you find the widget that you want. The folders are organized according to what kind of widget they are, but sometimes it can be hard to find just exactly the right one. So, a couple of tricks. One is, if you scroll down, you'll find a folder called Tag Types. So if you know that you're representing an analog status tag, I can go to my Analogs folder, find the Analog Status folder within that, and this gives me a list of every possible widget that I can use to represent this particular kind of tag. The other option that's available is to start with the tag browser. So if I did not have the IDEA Studio open, if I was working in the tag browser, and I've filtered for my analog status tags, if I want to draw something that's going to monitor a motor speed, I right-click on the tag, choose Draw. That opens the IDEA Studio, and it opens this pop-up palette that's been filtered for only the widgets that can be used to represent this kind of tag. Either method is a quick way of finding just the widget you want in order to represent the tag value. Close that, and close the tag browser. Let's work just within the IDEA Studio. Once you've found the widget you want, dragged it to the screen, the next thing you need to do is to link that to a tag. Now, if you went directly from the tag browser to draw a tag, it's going to be linked at the same time. But working within the image or the Idea Studio itself, I now need to select the widget, and I can use either the widget tools format and use the link button here, or I can right click on the widget choose a link, and this will open the tag browser up, but open it filtered for 
only the kinds of tags that could be linked to that particular kind of widget. So we have filtering that works in either direction. I'm going to link that to the running state of a, uh, a pump. And there we go. And just to remove confusion, let's get rid of that image we drew earlier. Now you'll notice this yellow indicator still blinking on the screen. You don't have to have that there. Some people like to turn off the indicators for unlinked uh, widgets. Myself, I recommend don't ever do that. It's very, very important to never accidentally leave a widget on the screen that's not linked to an actual tag value. The indicators will move going along with the simulator that's built in, but that can be very, very confusing for your operators. So I recommend always leave that checked and leave that annoying blinking thing there. It's a very useful reminder. Having drawn the widget, the next thing you might want to do is to format it so it looks just the way you want. Within the toolbars, after you select a widget, you're going to get a formatting toolbar that allows you to set any of the properties that are available for that widget. There's just a few of them here. I can change the opacity, and depending on what kind of widget I choose, there might be one or two other features. But if I go into the properties, or right click on the widget, and open the properties dialog, this is going to give you a, uh, a screen where you can choose all the various components within this and adjust the appearance. Now with a meter, that's not very many, but there's a couple of important ones. The first is scaling. For most of your widgets, you're going to have the option of scaling it either with the tags scaled minimum or maximum, or you can not use that and set up your own minimums and maximum values if you have some other sort of scaling you want to represent. In most cases, you will probably simply use the tags values for this. The other feature within every single widget is you have the ability to disable some of the operator controls. If I disable trends, then when an operator clicks on the widget, the historical data viewer trend view will not open. If I disable the navigator menu, then the operators will not have the ability to right click on the widget and open up that menu of options to do things such as enable or disable alarms or access any of the other features that are widget dependent. And the final one is I can disable tooltips so that when the operator hovers over the widget, the name is not going to show up. Now, why would you do any of these things? It varies by application. Maybe you've got a widget on top of a widget, and if you clicked on one of them, you'd end up with a historical data viewer for both. In that case, it makes good sense to disable the trends of the one that you really don't want to be opening. If you don't want your operators to be able to use um, the controls in the navigator menu, the option's available. And if the screen is getting busy, well, maybe it does make sense in that case to disable the tooltips, so that just reduces the clutter. The features will vary by widget. So closing that without changing anything, with this uh, set of uh, LCD indicators within the properties here, I see many, many more properties. It's built using images, so I could select a different image to represent all of the bars in that uh, indicator. I can also change the spacing, the number of the bars, etc., etc. So depending on the widget you're drawing, you're going to have more or fewer options. Now one other thing to watch out for is that some of your indicators and lights are sometimes built with multiple images. In this case, there are two here. There's the frame around the light, and there's that circular pattern of the lens itself. When I have a widget that contains multiple images, this menu will always open because it's set to automatically open by default. Myself, I tend to turn that off, but you may find it useful. This allows you to select 
which of the component images will be adjusted when you use the tools within the formatting toolbar. You can also go back to the home menu and all of the side panels can be enabled or disabled from within the home toolbar. That completes everything there is to know about widgets. Again, always refer to the help because on a widget by widget basis, there's going to be a few extra features.